So molecular compounds are a little bit different than ionic compounds because ionic comp compounds are con composed entirely of ions and ionic bonds, primarily ionic bonds. Whereas molecular compounds are going to be things that are covalently bonded. So the naming scheme unfortunately changes. I find ionic compounds are easier because there's not a, a real set of rules. But in molecular compounds, we have a lot, lot of rules. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to name the first element in the compound using the prefix, uh, a prefix, plus the element's name. However, don't forget this. For the moment, just write that down and hold on to it, and I'll show you why that's going to be important in a second. Second, the second thing in the compound is going to be named using a prefix plus part of the element's name plus the letters I, D, E. So just like we wrote chloride and oxide before, the same thing's going to happen here. We're still going to have chlorides and oxides. Now, hopefully, you'll notice that I've got a first and a second, which means I'm dealing with what are called binary compounds, compounds that are composed only of two types of elements. Okay. So if you see something that's complicated, like has three or four types of elements, know immediately that it's not molecular. It must be ionic. Okay, here are the rules. So here are the prefixes that I was talking about. So if I have one atom, this is going to be the atom, and this is the prefix. Okay, so if I have one atom, it's mono. If I have two atoms, it's di, as in carbon dioxide. If I have three atoms, it's tri. If I have four atoms, it's tetra. Five atoms, it's penta. Six atoms is hexa. Seven atoms is hepta, eight atoms is octa, like octane, nine atoms is nona, and then ten atoms is deca. Okay, so fairly straightforward. So these are all the prefixes. Now you just have to remember that mono is the only one that has an exception, and mono comes back up here, and I'll never use mono on the first element. I can only use mono on the second element. That's why you never hear things like mono carbon dioxide. It's just carbon dioxide, nice and smooth. Now let's practice. Okay, so I've got five compounds here. I'm going to walk you through the first five, and I'm going to let you do five on your own. So, first thing for first things first. Four is tetra. As is arsenic. Now, I put the hyphen in here only because I've got the double vowel. If I didn't have double vowels, I'd just make it one big word. Then I go to the second one. Ten is deca, and O of course is oxide. So it's deca oxide. It may also be written sometimes as deca oxide. Oxide's a little bit weird. Sometimes the double vowel gets dropped off. So either one is fine. Okay, now I move down here. Bromine. I only have one bromine, but so I'm not going to write mono. Okay, I'm going to leave the mono off. So I'm just going to write it as bromine. Remember, the first one is just written as the element's name. The second one, three is tri. And then it's oxygen again, so it's trioxide. Down here, one boron, one nitrogen. So it's boron, no mono, but the second one does have mono, mono nitride. N2O3, I've got two nitrogens, so finally I get to write a prefix. Dinitrogen tri oxide. And the last one, one nitrogen, would be mononitrogen, but I don't write the mono, so it's nitrogen. And I've got three iodines, triiodide. Again, notice the uh, use of the hyphen because of the double letter, uh, the double I's, okay? Double A's, double I's, double O's, whatever it is, you're going to use the hyphen. Okay. So here are five more examples. Now I want you to pause the video right now, complete these examples, and then unpause it, and I'm going to walk you through it. So I'm going to wait five seconds for you to pause the video. Okay, let's walk through. SF6, sulfur hexafluoride. XEF4, xenon. Got to spell tetra, right? Tetrafluoride. Notice U before O. Not flow urine. It's fluoride. PCL3. Phosphorus. Trichloride. 
CO, our favorite silent killer, carbon monoxide, oops. This is a situation where you drop off the double O, because otherwise it'd be manuxide, and that would just look weird. And then PCL5 would be phosphorus. Pentachloride. Okay, so that's naming compounds after, from their from their formula. Now let's form the formula from the name. Just as easy. Just go by the rules. They've already got everything laid out here. So chlorine is Cl. Monoxide. Mono means one. Oxide means oxygen. O. CLO. Oxygen difluoride. O. Fluoride is F. I've got two of them for the dyes. Boron phosphide. This should be a monophosphide. Typo. Apologize. Okay. Boron monophosphide. Boron is B. Mono means one. Phosphorus means P. So one P. BP. Dye nitrogen. Nitrogen is N. But I've got two of them because it's dye. Monoxide. O. But I've got one O. Again, notice I don't write any of the ones. Ones are implied in chemistry. Nitrogen trifluoride. N. Fluorine is F, tri means three, and F3, okay? So again, let's repeat. Here are five new ones. I'll give you five seconds to pause the video. Then after you've finished them, come back, check your answers. Okay, so here we go. Sulfur, S. Tetrachloride, chloride is Cl. Tetra means four, SCl4. Good example of a seesaw comp compound. Xenon trioxide, so xenon, X-E, oxide, O, tri, 3. Carbon dioxide, C, carbon, oxide, O, di, two of them. Diphosphorus pentaoxide, phosphorus, P, di, meaning two. Pentoxide, oxide, O, pent, 5. And phosphorus trichloride, phosphorus, and then trichloride, Cl, 3. And that is naming and forming ion and molecular compounds.